Hello again, Johnny London here once more. Uh, today I thought I'd show you how I tackle the sort of inevitable rust and battle scars that one gets around uh, the edge of the boat uh, above the water line. Uh, inevitable sort of little scratches and scrapes from when you moor and there's you know bolts and bits of metal sticking out that sort of thing and it's something I like to do uh, coming to the end of each season uh, you know sort of into autumn before the weather turns I like to get out here and uh, clean all those up and repaint them so the boat's all in ship shape fashion for another winter so let's have a quick look at how I tackle this. Angle grinder is the weapon of choice and rust, the enemy, is dead ahead. Now my approach is just to use an angle grinder and uh, I've got the mains on so I can power this um, but you know in the daytime the panels are putting out plenty of power so I don't need to run the engine this is only a few hundred watts and I only use it for a few minutes at a time. This is very very quick it will take you down through the, any remaining paint and any bits of rust and down to good clean metal very, very quickly, uh, but it leaves it quite rough. Um, so what I do after that is uh, I fill it with a bit of car filler to bring it level and then uh, roller paint it. So first of all, let's see how I get those bits of rust off. Now, when you do anything like this, safety is of paramount importance. Uh, you don't want to be getting an injury and then spending the rest of the day trying to make your way to the nearest hospital and waiting in A&E and all that kind of thing. So for me, it's a good pair of ear defenders. I uh, really need that because I suffer with the old tin ear as it is. And uh, then a good pair of goggles that completely sort of seal up around the face there so no bits can fly off your face and into your eyes. And that's it really, you can wear gloves if you want to. I tend not to um, because any loose threads could get caught up in the uh, gubbins that's spinning round. And uh, with an angle grinder, you know, as long as you hold it sensibly, uh, they're not too bad for that. So um, let's get cracking anyway. Well, as you can see, I've done it in such a way as there was a main bit and two or three other little bits and I've just joined them all up into one sort of area because it's better like that. These other little bits I'll probably sort of keep separate um, and then just sort of do it as I go really. There's not too much, this is the worst part, so I'll work my way up the rest of the boat. It's worth mentioning that this angle grinder should have a side handle and it hasn't, it's been lost. It would be better to operate if it did, but I manage okay. The guard's also movable. You can slide it around to different ways so that if you've got a funny bit that you're trying to get to, you can have it so you know, you've got the cutting edge exposed. Um, but I like it like this. I've got plenty of access. So I don't need to do anything fancy with it and it keeps my hand safe. So that's how I'll be using it for today. I'm not going to bother with any... Uh, rust treatment I'm just going to go straight on uh, with filler and then red oxide primer so I like to get it really shiny first
Well, that's taken almost no time at all, 10 minutes. Uh, I've got about uh, half a dozen to a dozen little bits to go around. Now, uh, I'm just gonna put some filler in first. supposed to be a golf ball of filler to a pea of hardener uh, but I just do it how I want. You've got to watch out though because when it goes off this stuff you get no warning it just sort of goes in seconds so if you've mixed up too much then it'll go to waste. On the other hand, if you don't put quite enough in, it will still harden, but it just takes ages, so. Don't let the higher boats out. So, um, it's all just about getting it on nice and even. I've uh, actually just gone over a few bits that I painted a time before uh, when I didn't have any filler. So I just do them while I'm at it. Oh, dropped a bit. A little bit trickier to apply on a curve. And I really want to do it all in one hit. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you just have to go over with a second strike. Bearing in mind, this doesn't... Oh, bollocks! Oh, that's all right, it's floated. That was lucky. <laughs> Bearing in mind, um, this doesn't have to be as good as you would do it on a car, obviously, but it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to do. And I see a lot of boats going past that have obviously been, you know, just painted over really badly, and it shows. And... Uh, this is just cosmetic, but I just like to keep it nice, you know. There we are. Years of practice on Ford Cortinas, Capris, other vehicles are available, of course. Just gilding the lily now. Well, I filled in uh, quite a few little imperfections other than the bits I ground down. So I'm just cleaning up the tools and uh, once I finish that, that filler should be dry enough to just give a little sand to. Well, this bit's a little bit tedious uh, you could use a small electric sander if you wanted to, but uh, to be honest with you, I find it just as easy to do it like this. I 
I've not put too much excess on, so there's not much to take off. I work my way methodically along the boat. Getting there. And that's it, all done. That's a bit I did the other day when I was working on the other side. So uh, I'm going to go and wipe all that down, get all the dust off, and then uh, give it a coat of uh, red oxide, I think. Now I'm just going to use a small roller to go over and I've got a little brush if I need to get into any nooks and crannies, but I haven't got much paint left. So, well, I'm going to have to go uh, a little bit steady with the paint as I run out before I finish. It's a bit dribbly because I've had this roller in thinners keeping it since I last used it. Um, I did squeeze it out but you know it's still a bit. Um, and also I'm just trying to do this so that I don't get an edge, too much of an edge. She might just do that whole bit there. Sort of deliberately leaving the edge a bit abstract because uh, it covers over better that way. And uh, just a quick second coat because the first one was a little bit too thinned. So really that will just keep it waterproofed in case it rains before I can get the top coat on. That's it. So I'm all done for now. That's a couple of coats of red oxide on the bits that had bare metal underneath. The bits where I've put a bit of filler in just sort of cosmetically um, over paint where I hadn't sort of done as well before. I've just left in the filler and uh, that'll be easier to cover with the grey. Now the thing to do is when I do paint the top coat of grey I need to make sure that I've got all that really nice and clean first of all because if you sort of try and paint in to some paint you'll trap dirt under it and it'll always look darker or you know the wrong colour so I should wait for it all to dry off properly give it a really really good clean and then I can get the light grey out and go around and uh, just give it a top coat and it'll look good. As you can see I've picked out quite a few little imperfections. It's funny how these jobs tend to grow once you get started. Well, all the paint's dried off nicely, so uh, I'm just going to sand it all dead smooth and then uh, clean everything down. There we go, that's one bit done. Well that's all that side done now. Well it's turning into one of those jobs that's just getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. 
what started out as just touching up a few bits uh, down the side of the boat. I've um, also been busy cleaning out the uh, gas lockers and I sort of uh, cleaned them all up and red oxide them a little while ago so they need repainting when I get the light blue out but for today because I'm using the grey uh, to do the side of the boat I'm going to um, get everything else ready that needs a bit of grey paint you know sort of at the same time so I've moved the hatch to uh, paint the runners and all around there where I sort of red oxided a little while ago and uh, I've uh, got the gas locker lids um, they're ready to be painted all nicely sort of smoothed down the reason I'm doing those um, is because what happened was there were some hinges on there that sort of all rusted up and I cut them off with the angle grinder and just smoothed everything over all nicely and I'll get it all you know painted all nice and then uh, look for some different sort of hinges uh, that I can just sort of bolt on so uh, let's have a little look at the chaos here's one of the gas locker lids and here's the other just awaiting a top coat. The other end of the hatch runners tidied up. Just look how smart the insides of the gas lockers are. I've ended up taking the doors off too. So as you can see plenty going on I've got the doors off too they've had a coat of paint and uh, really it's um, just a question of uh, you know doing things methodically and then hopefully by the end of the day that paint dries off pretty quick um, I should be able to reassemble everything <laughs> if I can remember how. Here's a little tip for you when I finish doing my painting I put my roller into a jar with a bit of thinners. I've got one for the grey, one for the dark blue, one for the light blue and probably a couple of other ones for primer and stuff and um, I can leave these season to season, come back to them, they're fine, ready to go. I'm well underway with the grey paint now Two coats should do it. When you look at it like this, there's a lot of boat. Luckily, I'm not painting it all this time. I'll just tackle that bit around the hatch now. Well, hopefully you can just see behind me there uh, today's efforts I've uh, done all the little bits of uh, blue paint around the lockers there I'm not doing inside I'm going to leave them in that sort of red oxide so I think that looks rather smart actually and uh, I repainted the uh, hatch as well the blue of the hatch on the top and uh, I finished painting the side of the boat now we can have a look at that in a minute and um, there's just oh, a little bit of grey to touch up 
on the roof hatch runners in a minute and a couple of other little things um, once I've had a cup of tea and a cake and uh, I think then that'll do it for today good as new Oh, well, there we go. The doors are back on, the hatch is in place. These have had a fresh coat of paint because I had a few bits to tidy up on them. The bulkheads too, and all around the lockers. I'll put the uh, lids on the lockers tomorrow when everything's really, really good and dry. Don't want anything sticking. And uh, the hatch has had a fresh coat of paint as well. And also the side, the port side gunnel. I've got the other, the other gunnel still to do. I'll do that when I'm on the, uh, the other bank. You know, it's easier to work like that. Um, I'm hoping that's all the painting done for this year. Certainly all the maintenance work done for this year. Although I was hoping to get around to um, putting some lines on the boat and the name as well. So whether I'll get time in the sort of window of opportunity before the weather closes in for this season, well, that remains to be seen.